to this new video from Scarlet Fire 7 um, for Project 009. And you may be wondering what on earth this is going to be. Well, this will in fact be a diorama. Um, yeah, so basically this is a bit of um, a flooring tile that's been lying about the house for goodness knows how long. Um, and these are just two bits of wood. I'm going to raise the track up like so. And it's going to have hills on either side. So basically that's all I have to say about it at the moment. Um, I'll keep you posted as we go through. Okay, so this is it at the next stage. I've put in all the card struts and they're just drying now. That's why there's masking tape holding them up. I've started on the back to I have paper mache along the back. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paper, fully paper mache the rear of it and then insert the scrumpled up balls of newspaper. Um, so I'm doing that at the moment and here, this little inlet here, um, I decided to make have a little change from the rolling hills and have a little quarried in, inlet there. Um, so it could be just as if it's coming into a quarry or whatever. So anyway, that's what it's like at the moment. Um, just need to. The reason I stopped and have clean hands at the moment is because I need to change the disc uh, on the DVD player. <laughs> that's the only reason um, why there's this little what update at the moment, right? So, um, so in the next clip you'll see it at another stage. I don't know when on the next day. Probably when I need to change the disc again. <laughs> okay, so welcome back. And I've finished off the paper mache. So last time you saw it, I think I just paper mache the back and this front bit. I think. I can't remember. <laughs> that was yesterday. So basically I paper mache the back and the front and the cliff in the area. And left this front area um, dry, uh, uncovered. So I left that to dry overnight. Um, in the cupboard that has the boiler in it, so it was nice and warm. Um, and then once that was dried, the, today I put bits of newspaper along here so that the back kept it in and I just paper mache the whole thing with lots and lots of paper mache and toyed around it with glue as you can see it's very wet at the moment <laughs> it's got about a whole newspaper worth of paper underneath it to stop my carpet getting glued um, you might be able to see the shiny bit of the puddles of what? of the puddles of glue um, also I finished Red Dwarf and from why well, I've been watching it from start to finish. So I finished Red Dwarf season 8, episode 8 yesterday, um, and then moved on to the first series of Big Bang Theory. Um, just as good. Quite different though. Um, uh, one thing, um, as, as you build scenery, it kind of develops as you go. So I had no plan to make this a kind of quarried out area. I was just kind of part, part bothered making it <laughs> Otherwise, in part, it would look quite cool. Um, now I think I think the support that was in here has slipped back, so now we've kind of been left with this ridge here. Oh, that's squint. I'll try not to hold it squint. Um, and this ridge here. So that's kind of... It looks a bit strange, but it'll just be like... It's a bit of hard rock sticking out. But the railway men couldn't bother drilling anymore. So the train... The track will just go along it like this. Uh, before I finished gluing paper mache, before I started paper mache, I checked clearances with my coach. Right, so I ran it, ran this along the track just to check that it cleared it. Even though there won't be any running, I'll just for stationary vehicles. I've also been out into the garden and collected some rocks, which are over here. Um, so there's bits of slate that I found lying about. Um, and also these rocks that are quite jaggedy. Um, so it looks kind of like, like if you scale it up, it looks like a big boulder. So I'm just going really to put there. Um, left over from when the glacier came along here, just dropped it. can't remember the geological term for that type of rock, but um, well, I don't know what it was about. I remember that from standard grade geography. Um, anyhow, next stage, wait for this to dry.
So here we have it the afternoon after. And as you can see, it's a lovely sunny day. So I've placed it outside just to finish off drying. Well, it's dry, but it's not really that hard. So next day, just to get it inside, um, start scenicing it. Put some grass mat on it. We've got some hedges and scatter materials on order. So we'll get them on there. Okay, so this is where I'm at now. I have just where the where the track's going to be. I have placed. I painted it with this kind of. It's another one of these tester pots. It's called Intense Truffle. Um, it's basically kind of a mud brown that kind of goes with the ballast um, I was I'm going to use, which is this Pico stuff, which I've used before on the layout. Um, and I've also painted the cliff, the bits that are going to be rocky, exposed areas, that colour as well. But I'm now going to go over them with my Tarmac Black, or Black Magic, as homebase call it. Um, and then some other colours over the top to try and get some kind of rocky, slaty effect. Okay, so here's the next bit along. It's already looking quite good. Um, this is about half an hour after the last update, I think. Um, so I've just glued, glued them grass mat along the bottom, which is nice. Um, if you got a kind of, so what you do is just cover the back. Well, cut, do the, do the top, what I was, was taught in nursery school. So you draw the Scotland flag, so they go, or the England flag, it doesn't really matter. So along the edges and the cross, um, either that way or that way, along the middle, and then do a little blob in each corner. And then that should provide enough glue, especially along the edges, that's the most important bit. And as you can see, it's quite nicely following the contours that I've made. Um, that's some people's complaints with grass mat, but um, yeah, seems to have worked. Um, so next up, I've uh, I've put this little bit of slate in with polyfiller, attached that there, and along here these with these steeper bits, or what's come out as steeper bits, um, are going to be cliff faces, um, and seen as the the just plain paper mache doesn't look that great as a cliff, then well kind of here kind of I've contoured it to look more cliffy, but it doesn't look that great. Um, so over here I've kind of put in a bit of um, polyfiller to just kind of make it look a bit more like a cliff. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Uh, I shall update you when I move on. Okay, so here you have it. This is it the next day. So uh, the, the grass mat has been secured and dried. Um, this little patch here is just where that was just where I, um, I was gluing a rock down there. I didn't like it where it was, so it's kind of just PVA glue is dried, but I should just glue some of the some of the scenic materials which arrived today over it. But I'll show you those in a second. Um, um, yes, it's on my lap currently because my desk is being taken up by a Boeing 737. No, 727, sorry. Well, not literally, but it's in the pipeline. Um, so I've started doing a bit of the painting of the rocks, so I've secured this in um, with PVA glue because polyfiller didn't seem to hold it. Um, so I went over it with my um, go-to black paint, which is kind of a sleety colour, which I just got from home base. Um, and I've kind of half dry, semi dry brushed, semi lightly brushed um, some of this like, light green coloured paint, as you can see. Uh, it won't be this obvious in the final thing because it's put on put on more coats of various rocky coloured paints to kind of build it up, and that'll look quite good in the end. So yeah, it's definitely getting there. This is day three of three of the build. So it might be day four actually. Yeah, it's day four. I'm also on to the second series of the Big Bang Theory already, so kind of gives you an idea how much time I've been spending on it. Or how much time I've been spending on it while actually watching the television. Um, but anyway, I'll just show you what I ordered and what 
uh, with that what what I ordered um, and that arrived today. I'll just move the 737 out of the way. And let's if we go into my scenery box. Um, not all of this has been bought today, obviously. Um, a lot of it was bought previously, and it's just sticking in here. Um, so this is the first thing. It's a Woodland Scenics product. This is the first time I've really bought some Woodland Scenics products, so I'll let you know how they get on. Um, it's some fine turf in a weeds type colour, so it's a dark green scatter material. I also got from Woodland Scenic some bushes in medium green and this one is in light green so kind of give it a summary effect. I also got this. Um, this has been highly recommended by um, quite a few people. It's um, Woodland Scenic's Scenic Cement made in the US of A. Um, I think the real advantage of this is over just generally PVA glue is the fact that it can be sprayed on and it kind of dries very clear and a matte based finish whereas PVA glue has a glossy base finish um, and it seals products and it's spray on so that will make it useful and it's quite, quite diluted anyway so I'll give that a go, that was only about £5 um, these were about £2 each so it's pretty good going uh, good value from Woodland Scenics. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know how I get on with this later on in the video.